why were you saying Cabanetto? My grandma, my dad's mom, okay, is so Cabanetto. So, got it. Yeah, so that's where the Italian blood, and I, I claim that. Right. Uh, because, well, I was the closest from them, and I don't know if you've noticed, but, like, I spend a lot of time with family up here. Yes. Like, that's my grandpa's, my grandma's brother that we, we saw, yep. you know, and, like, so that's just the Italian thing. I was in with my grandma's sister who lives in town. Like, that's just, you know, families and... You always he offered you a wine at nine a.m. and that's yeah. just how he rolls. He did. I assume a homemade wine too. <laughs> and yeah, and if you would have if you would have had it, right. he would have brought out cheese and sausage. And I mean, that's just the Italian. Thing. I definitely would have said yes if I had gotten more than four hours of sleep <laughs> and yes. wasn't dying. Yes. Well, anyway, that's a decent start. Uh, so Matt Albrecht, welcome to yeah. the podcast. Hey, thanks. Or Matt Cavagnetto. <laughs> Cavagnetto, yeah. However yeah. you want to do it. <laughs> that's great. Um. Thanks for having us up here, man. I got to yeah. catch uh, the listeners up with what is going on real quick. Um, so we are in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in, I'm never going to tell you the town. And <laughs> it's been a good time here. Matt uh, was my professor in college. Andrew, both Andrew and I had him as a professor and uh, reached out because of Wild Higgins, because of the, the videos we make and the fact that we've been, you know, active at making stuff and said, come hunt on your land. And so we set it up. And came up end of October here, and we've just been bow hunting deer. Yeah. And we've had success this time. I'm very, very pleased to report. Yeah. And I'm super excited about that, too. Like, I, I love that your first deer, you know, you you got down here. That's, yeah. that's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's great. So, so you know, uh, for those of you who know the story, last year, Andrew and I went out in Wisconsin, and we I hit a buck, and we tried like hell to find him for two days. And weren't able to recover him. It was really sad. It was kind of a sad start to the journey. But, you know, we did a lot more hunting over the last year of different animals, which I didn't realize at first how much experience that would give me um, for this. But it, it does. It starts to translate really a lot of it. And so came back out and uh, we were hunting for, I think we only were out for like three days or so before we finally got one. And yeah. um, I had a big, big doe walk right by my stand and we had been kind of eyeballing them. I'd been seeing does everywhere. Um and the goal was just to get a deer. I wasn't terribly picky about a buck or a doe yep. as long as it was nice and big and got a good shot off. And then we trailed her and man, it was a heck of a night. It was, her. it was an exciting night. You know, I, it was a lot, I mean, it was a lot of, of, of work, you know, but, um, I, I, I was confident, you know, when, when you told me about the shot and we started seeing a, a steady trail, mm -hmm. I know that you said that you had some, you know, like reservations from the last time. Yeah. But... Just, just flashbacks. Yes. Just flashbacks to <laughs> yes. like, this is kind of how it looked last time. It wasn't right. like it was way more blood than last time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, well, I, I don't know how much ever my listeners know about hunting, sure. but the thing is like when you're shooting, you're looking for generally with a bow, either a broadside shot or what they call a quartering away shot, which is sort of the animals kind of sideways to you, but also a little bit with their head kind of further away. Because both of those give you really good access to heart and lungs to make a good um, clean shot. And so this was a quartering away shot. I knew I'd got her right, right behind the shoulder, which is what you want um, into the lungs. Um, and we knew that this time because I had a lighted knock, mm -hmm. which was a big upgrade from last year. I, yeah. you know, having one of those, was massive so she actually took that with her she had the arrow with her the whole time it lodged in um and having that lighted knock helped us find her in the end i i think it's the reason we did find her i mean yeah at the end i mean that that's without that we it would have been more difficult yeah much more difficult for sure for sure um but yeah so we, we blood trail through the woods and honestly i felt like i hope this isn't always how it goes i i i think it's everybody's goal to make a a good shot that leads to a very quick death um, but it's not always the case with bows, um, because unlike guns, they don't necessarily immediately go into shock and a lot of things that happen very, very fast with guns. Um, and so we had to track her for quite a while and bump her and try to keep her, keep her up. And I, I you know, I'm not even sure if we did bump her. Do you know if we actually did at one point? Did you I, hear her take I, off? I ever? think there were a few times where when I called, you know, I called back to you that I, I heard her ahead because if you recall, there were a few times where, you know, we paused and then yeah. we'd go another 20, 30 yards and there'd be a a bigger patch of blood where she was maybe where she maybe resting. was laying down yeah. and we we kicked her and and we're pushing her a little bit yeah. um which i think on this deer you know you don't always want to do that but i think on this deer it actually helped us yeah because... i'm curious i was going to ask you about the philosophy on that because you know i've heard both ways yeah. i've heard the way of give it a few hours back out of there and let them lay down and die because then they'll stay close yep but then your version was more like let's keep bumping her because 
then she'll expend more blood and she won't necessarily scab up and do things that would make it harder to find her. So like what, yeah, I, I, what told you that that was the right call? I mean, cause I, it was, I felt like it was a good hit. I felt like you had a good hit. So I, I, you know, based on what you told me and where she was and, you know, I looked at how close she was to you. And, and so, you know, I was confident that you made a good shot and the, and the blood trail, even when it got light, um, was still consistent. Like there was never a time where we spent more than 15 minutes picking it back up, right. right? We were always able to, you know, by making those little half circles or whatever, like one of us in the group was able to, to pick it up again. Mm-hmm. And that was telling me that, you know, she was, she was hit, hit well. Yeah. And so I felt like if we could keep pushing her just a little bit, that she was going to expire maybe a little sooner than if she would lay down for, you know, a couple hours Right, because when she finally did die, it was that last sprint up the hill yes. that did it to her. Yes. Right, um, she could have laid by that river or that stream that we found that I found her by for maybe another, you know, hour, two right. hours. I mean, I don't know. Right, right. But that last sprint up the hill, that was just kind of her last hurrah, and yeah. she she expended everything she had, and and that was it. You know. Yeah, it was it was really wild. So you you found her. Um, she had crossed this stream like multiple times, <laughs> yes. which when you're blood trailing is terrifying because you watch the trail go into the water and, you, and that's it. And you're yeah. like, OK, did she cross or did yeah. she walk up the water for a while? Yep. I mean, it's it's like the same way you lose like a dog that's tracking you. It's like <laughs> right. it's so hard to tell sign of anything in yep. the water because it all gets washed away. And so, again, you go to the other side, you get back on your hands and knees and you keep looking for more sign. And we had done that a few times. Um and then you yelled out that you found her, which I was really pleased about. Yeah. Um, but her head was still up. She was yeah. still look, kind of looking around. But it's interesting. She was definitely in those last moments because, you know, we were pretty close to her. You'd never get that close no. to a deer that was in good shape, you know. No, not at all. Um, she just didn't have anything left. So you guys uh, went back and you were going to grab my bow. And I was sitting with your cousin in the woods. Yeah. And she, it, we're, nothing's happening. Yeah. And all of a sudden she jumps up and runs up this hill. And so I'm yelling at your cousin and he's a young, he's a young guy. So it's hard to tell him what to do, Yeah. but I, I I was like, okay, but he's got to know that I'm the adult, right? He did not. Um, (laughs) No. (laughs) So I was like, you stay here so that they can find us again when they come back, when Matt and Andrea come back, I need them to find us. Yeah. And I just took up off the, took, took off up the hill and I'm running, you know, with my headlamp, I'm trying to keep it covered somewhat because I know that's just going to spook her further and I'm following this green light in the distance, which is that knock. And I just know if I lose that, it, I might it's not find her tough. again. Yeah. And um, so and and it did. It went out of view a couple times. Yeah. And I'm I'm just sprinting uphill in the dark, <laughs> trying not to die. I found some wild splinters that were so deep in my hands, oh, really? from falling over. And, like <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I did eventually come up on her, and then you guys were able to come with the bow. But by then, she had already expired. It was that was the last, you know. That push for push. her yeah. yeah which was good right yeah. i mean that's the thing she you're right she could have been by the stream waiting for a long time instead she gave it one last sprint and that was it yep um and yeah once we found her i mean a good shot at this sh- a shot i'm proud of it was yeah. what you want on the quartering away which is kind of rear lung yep through up the sternum um i actually don't know how to tell maybe you'd know this was that a double lung then or a single lung shot or can we tell i i couldn't really tell um based on based on like when you were pulling pulling the guts out and stuff but it it was a solid you definitely hit one of the lungs i yeah. mean that we saw we saw that but it was really nicely placed and and it going through coming through that front front chest cavity right i right. mean that caused caused some more damage which again led to her maybe bleeding out a little bit more right um and you know i think having it with her she probably bumped it around oh, yeah. quite a bit which you know I, it's so funny cuz if you're not involved in this this all sounds incredibly gruesome yeah. <laughs> yes. but what you don't understand is that I want as much damage as possible yeah. because that's the kind thing that's going to make it much faster. Right. Like this is inevitable. Right. Um, so I want it to be fast. And sometimes that involves some gore, you know, yep. it just is what it is. Um, and that's not something I would have known like yep. growing up without this, you yeah. know? So it's, it's interesting to get used to it and start to understand it. And that was one of those things with pushing her too. I mean, I, we knew the arrow was in her because with that lighted knock, we, we on the blood, we never found the arrow. No. We knew the arrow was, was still in her. her. We knew that she didn't pull it out. And so I knew the more, and when she got in that really thick stuff, I knew that, you know, as she was going through that, that was doing, that was going back and forth and that was yeah. causing some damage. And we saw with the blood, when she went through that thick stuff, it yeah. would really pick up. There were kind right? of two exit wounds really, yes. you yep. know? Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you know it it turned out great. Yeah. You know, and and we learned a lot. Um 
That blood trailing flashlight too, by the way. Yeah. Like <laughs> if, if anybody legit. hasn't seen these before, <laughs> I looked it up on YouTube at, or on Amazon after last year. Yeah. It's just a perp, a bright purple light and it makes red just shine. Yeah out there that was a huge upgrade to my kit this year i'm gonna be picking up a couple yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> it was ama- it was amazing it was it was a huge help in those moments where you're like where are where yeah. where where are you going? we're looking at just tiny specks yeah right i mean it, there were moments where it was like you know just tiny specks and right. that, that light picked it up and what would happen is like we'd be going down this trail and you'd think okay she's gonna go on this trail so yep. you you and your cousin would run ahead and and start trying to find it further down because that saves you a lot of time. Yeah. If you can move 15 feet at a time, do yep. that. Yep. But I would usually hang back with that flashlight because it was so good. Yep. And I would be on my hands and knees looking for the next spot. And, yep. and, you know, probably 10 different times, you guys would be down there and then I'd see she took a right she here. She just would turn And off. you had to follow these little like pinpoint yep. bits of blood to see that she had taken a right here. Then I'd holler over, you guys come over, and then you'd pick it up like 15 feet in that direction. Yep. yep. It was, it was, I truly felt like, that was hunting and i think yes. people don't see that as hunting yeah. you know what i mean yeah to me that's the that's one of the fun parts right like when i think about hunting especially bow hunting archery hunting is is it's really fun to get them close right yeah. with gun you, you don't have to get them within 20 25 yards but mm-hmm. with bow you ha- to get a solid shot you really should right so that's exciting but then the tracking part to me i mean i grew up this i, I told you in the woods that night one of my favorite memories is tracking with my dad mm-hmm. you know i had those are some of my favorite memories going out with the lantern and, and tracking deer. And, and you're right. That is, that is the true hunting. Cause you are, you're going through this pitch dark, you know, woods yeah. at 10 o'clock at night and you're looking for specks of blood yeah. on leaves. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's pretty, you're kind of close cool. to them in that moment too, yeah. because you're like, you're thinking like them and you're seeing yes. what they were up to. And, it, and I'm astounded. I'm astounded that something can have an arrow in it mm-hmm. and then choose to run up eight Hills. Yeah over and over again no problem like yep. the the <laughs> I, I don't know what that takes you know it's a lot they they're are strong resilient yeah, animals they are strong animals yeah. they really are they the, really the are. will to live is really really strong yeah. i think i think stronger than a person would be in that yeah. moment you know absolutely most people at least yeah um yeah i was trying to think of other things that like really helped in that moment i mean i i think it was just different than i expect you know you, you talk about bow hunting you practice shooting so much that's yep. probably the main thing you practice mm-hmm. you also kind of practice being quiet and you plan and you sit in the right stands and hope that you get the right spot um and you wait for them to get close but but to me that was just executing do you know what i mean like when she came up and i knew it was time that was the part i was already good with so right. that didn't feel like hunting to right. me you know <laughs> right it was it was honestly very little effort right. for how much you prepare for it yep um, it was it was all the blood trailing and then physically literally chasing her that was chasing her yeah that was hunting that was fucking work <laughs> that was a lot <laughs> of work run, dude yeah a lot faster than me <laughs> oh man I, I just I got yeah I I when Trent told me that you know I just thought wow that's that's pretty cool but we could see when when Andrea and I and Trent started walking up uh, the hill. I saw the green knock before yeah. I saw you because yeah. you had had your light off. Or yeah, because I was close to her. I didn't want to. I was listening for her to yes. take off again. But I could see this. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. From 40, 50 yards away, I just saw this, you know, this like beacon, <laughs> this Dude, green, you know. I keep comparing it to the Great Gatsby because it's literally yeah. the green light, yes. you know, that, that like signals hope or whatever, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, yep. I wish, and it's funny because like I kind of wish I could have shared that experience with other people, but that yeah. was just for me. That moment, yes. I don't think, I, I'm sure it happens sometimes in hunting, um, but that's got to be a rare one to be literally in the middle of dark, in the in the middle of the woods, pitch black, chasing this green light that's running away from yeah. you, knowing that you have to get it. Yes, yeah. And it it um I I think a shout out goes to um Jeremy Kerber who has been one of my hunting mentors, mm-hmm. and he he runs this company called Fit to Hunt. Sure. And they specifically do, uh, you know, getting people in physical shape for hunting. Oh wow. And I was like, I'm so glad that. I have the mentality and had a mentor like that who's like, yep. be in shape for this because yep. I had to run up a hill. Yep. Had to. Yep. There's no option to it. And then I obviously had to drag, you had to drag 100 this pounds. Animal, right? Yeah, through the woods. Through the woods, over the stumps, over, you know, and yep. grass. I mean, it's not not easy. Not easy. Not easy. I, tra- I challenge somebody to go out and do it. <laughs> Take a sled if you don't want to track, an a- you know, carry an animal. But like when you come to that log, you go over the log yep. because there's nowhere else to go. Yep. Yeah, that was something else, man. But a good, a good thing and like, that that level of self development like there's nothing like it no you know no yeah 
it's one of the most unique things in the world, I think. It it really it really is, and um, you know, just being that close to nature, and I mean, the respect. I mean, I could see that with you too. The respect you had for the animal that you took. That's one thing that that I think a lot of people who look at hunters and say, oh, well, they're these terrible people. No, right? Like we we take it seriously. Most of us, you know, take it very seriously, and and we have a great respect for the. The animal that we've taken yep. and um you know and and for what it's gonna t- you know all the the food and and everything it's gonna give us you know and and i saw that and that was really cool for me to see on from my perspective you know that the respect that you and andrea had for for the deer and right. and uh yeah that that's that's really cool yeah i mean we're brand new hunters yeah. you know and it's everything's new yeah. all the time yep um but like it makes me more proud. Like, yeah. like that doe was a fucking fighter. <laughs> was you know, a fighter. That 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 meat is infused with like the spirit of intense <laughs> she's, fighting. You and know? she's a big girl too. She yes. was a big girl. It was a, a very big doe. We got a lot of meat off of her yesterday. Yeah, and we wasted very little. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very little. You know, there were there was like a small bucket of trimmings. There's there's the carcass and and some of the bones we couldn't use. We kept even some of the bones yeah. though because Andrew's gonna make bone broths and stuff. Yep. We kept the liver. We kept the heart. Yep. You know, we actually ground up the liver, which was kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and smells so bad. Does I mean, it? that's just liver. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Ugh. Um, but we, yeah, we got so much meat. The freezer is full, and that's we got awesome. roasts and backstrap. That backstrap was it was good? Beautiful. No, we we didn't eat it last night. You didn't eat it, okay? Because by the time we went in, yeah. it was late, and I yeah. was sick as a dog. Yeah. I was feeling terrible. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna be forcing this down. Right. Let's you want to enjoy it? Yeah, enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Really make it a culinary moment because yeah. yeah, just don't. Do yeah, that yeah. To yourself, <laughs> yeah you know? that's right. You want to enjoy it. No worse way to like learn how to hate a food than to eat it when you <laughs> yeah, feel terrible. Yes. You know, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's we're exactly gonna eat it. Right. We're gonna we're gonna eat it up tonight. It'll be it'll be exciting. Oh, to that's try great. That. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, but but this was just a trip of uh, of lessons. You know, um, yeah. first couple of days we went out there, I took uh, uh, some shots on does that were one was I think twenty five and the other was thirty yards mm-hmm. away, and I know that for a fact because one of them was so was standing around for so long that I had time to get my range finder out <laughs> and range her. Yeah. So I knew it was 30 yards. Right. I took a shot. We checked the tape. It's right where I sent it. Yeah. But both of these does were able to dodge or duck yep. Yep. the arrow. Yep. They, it's, they call it jumping the string. Yep. And we did, Andrew and I did the math on this. It gives them lit- like 30 yards. It gives them like 0.2 seconds. And in 0.2 seconds, they can hear that and move their entire body out of the it's way. It's just a reaction. Yeah, <laughs> it's, crazy. it's crazy. It is crazy. Because you're thinking that arrow is moving at 300 and some feet per second, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that is just, yeah. But sound moves at 2,000. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, there yep. you go. Yep. Um, but it definitely inspired me to, number one, limit my shot range. Yep. So this one was like 17 yards. Yep. And I just knew that this time. But I think for next year, I'll be trying to tune the bow up, mm-hmm. give it some more weight, higher poundage, and and some thicker arrows, and just see if I can get get out a little bit further. Yeah, yep. Because because a thirty yard shot is not a nope. bad shot. Nope. It's pretty good. Yep. Um, for for most archers, it's like yeah, you can hit yeah, you a can bullseye at thirty. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'd like to be able to take that shot, but <laughs> you will. Man. Well, it gave me some insight over last year. Yeah. I had a bunch of misses last year. Yep. And they were all about thirty yards, and yep. I'm thinking. That's, that's probably what was that's happening what was. every time. Yep. But I was blaming myself so much last year right. for missing. Right. Um, and maybe I, I can forgive myself for some of those because <laughs> it's Abs- like maybe I took a great shot and they were just, they the were just incredible jumping incredible animals. Yeah. Dude. I mean, a deer is a very hard animal to get close, right? Yeah. Just with, with their, their hearing and, and their smell, right? Like they are easily spooked, yeah. easily spooked. And um, so, yeah, to, to get, I think... To get a, a deer with a bow is is one of the more difficult difficult things while while hunting. Difficult, you know. Um, yeah. it, it's pretty 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 spectacular when you can do it. Feels good. Yeah. <laughs> and we yeah. even have so many tools to make it easier for yeah, ourselves. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're right? thirty feet up in a tree. Yeah. They don't look up there really. Right. Um, your camouflage. Your you've camouflage. got scents out. You've yeah. got you know what I'm saying like you've got so many things. All of the things, and, and they still they, hear you. Yep. They'll still hear the slightest movement. Yep. Um. I was going to ask you something. This is how, but this is how little sleep I'm running. On yeah. Right like, <laughs> you were not a podcast brain. Like, yeah. <laughs> the recall is so gone. Um, yeah. I, but, but, oh, here's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Uh, does versus bucks. I feel like as I've drawn and taken shots on both mm-hmm. at this point, I feel like does are way jumpier than bucks are during rut. 
Yeah, well, I think, think that's true. I think it depends. You know, you and I talked in the in the truck the other day about how you know bucks, those big bucks are big for a reason, right? Right, and so I think it depends on a, on a lot of things um, because those big those big boys, you know, th- those ten, twelve, those five, six year old deer, right? They're gonna they're gonna know. Or in most cases, right? You get those deer because they screw up most times, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They are in the wrong place, and and you happen to to be there that day. But they're, they're winning most battles because they're five, six years old, right? right? Um, but the does, I mean, the does have been being chased, and you know, I mean, obviously. So yeah, I mean, I think I think um, it depends on the deer, depends on the situation. They're just jumpy creatures, mm-hmm. right? I mean, they are just like I said, to get a deer within 20 yards and, and to, to stand and draw a bow and, and get a shot, that's mm-hmm. pretty spectacular. But there's also a few things that lend them to being good for that at the same yeah. time because they're also curious. So curious. sometimes they'll hear you draw, and this one actually did yep. at one point. Um, when As I was just like standing up getting my bow ready, yeah. she heard something. And they'll, they'll take off for about 10 feet, but then they'll kind of come back because they're just curious enough and it wasn't that scary and sure. they come back through. And then the other thing that deer do when you when they hear a sound oftentimes is freeze. You know, it's the yep. same thing they respond to cars sure. with, you know. So sometimes if you have to give them a noise, they may stop where they are, which is yep. as an archer, that's what you need. Yep. Um, so there's a few things where we actually kind of work well together in the process. What you see up here um, as the season goes on yeah. is when gun season starts, they start getting real skittish mm-hmm. to the point where, you know, I've had it where when I click my safety – they're gone. Wow. By the sec, because they've been hearing these big, you know, gunshots all over. And, right. you know, it's been so, you know, two weeks from now, um, it, it's just funny to see how they, how, how all of them kind of change, um, just how skittish they are, because that obviously is traumatic for them, you right. know, all these gunshots. But, but, um, yeah, they're interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Even, even when you take a shot, sometimes they'll come back. They'll come back. Because, you know, at, especially this time of year yeah. when there's less pressure. Yep. All they know is like maybe a branch just yeah, fell over. Yeah, there. I don't know what that was. You know? Yeah, they don't know because they don't know you're there. Right. They have theory, no idea. In theory. Yeah. Sometimes they see you though. Sometimes, Sometimes they know. <laughs> Even the and the does may start stamping their feet at you yep. and being like, "Get out of here." Yep. Um, which is fair. Which yep. is fair. I'm kind of in their territory. The number of times I've had them stare at me and I've just closed my eyes because that's one of the things that that I've learned is if I close my eyes and they don't see my eyes moving or blinking, that right. that calms them, right? right? So I will. I'll just close my eyes, you know, for 30 seconds and look back up. And if they're still looking at me, I'll just close them again. And, yeah. you know, at some point they'll settle down and yeah. then I'm like, all right, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Can I, can, is this something we can talk about on the podcast? Can I ask you about how you react to deer versus how I react to deer? Yeah, absolutely. Wise? Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. So as, as folks might imagine, when a deer walks by and your intent is to shoot an arrow at them <laughs> and they're coming in range of you, your heart rate is insanely high. All of your adrenaline kicks in. Your legs may start shaking. It's a very intense adrenaline-driven process. Um, now, you, as far as I understand it, don't have adrenaline. I don't have any adrenaline. Don't produce adrenaline. That's right. Which is an issue for many things, right? right. It's, it's not. You need adrenaline for something. You need adrenaline to live, right? I cannot survive without adrenaline. So, you know, I take daily medication. I take a daily steroid because if your body does not have that that uh, hormone, you will not survive. You can survive three, four, five days and, and that'll be it. Yeah. So it occurred to me when I was up in the stand one day <laughs> that that's what happens to me is that huge adrenaline jump, yeah. uh, dump rather when, when a deer walks up. So how does it feel for you when that deer comes within range? So I... Initially, I mean, my heart rate does, I still feel some excitement, right? For sure. So my heart rate, I'll get that kind of spike in, in heart rate for, for a few seconds. And then it, it just mellows, it, I, I mellow back out. And then it's just it's just like I am right now, right? It's, it's just kind of normal. And, and I know I talk to a lot of people and they're like, how is that possible? It's just, you know, my body doesn't have, doesn't have that um, hormone, doesn't have that, that fuel yeah. to fuel that in me, right? And so... Uh, you know, when I see a deer, my heart picks up and then, um, within a few seconds, it's, I'm back calm and it's helped me. It's helped me a lot. Right. Yeah. Cause I don't get buck fever. I mean, right. it's, it's weird. You know, a lot of people talk, my dad's had it. A lot of people have talked about it. Um, I just, I don't experience that. Can't imagine. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of <laughs> not well, cool, but I, I think it's great that what it really is, I think it's great that you found a place where that becomes a superpower. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, absolutely. Because it could have just been a bad thing, and you could have always seen that as yeah. everything is bad because of this. 
but you because of your your lifestyle and things you're into you actually have this one area where yeah. it's like actually it's pretty it great me. for this <laughs> <laughs> like like you know i've i've told you i've i the only deer i've ever not harvested with a gun was was because of the rain that time mm-hmm. but i've i've every every shot i've ever taken i should knock on wood mm-hmm. i've harvested every deer mm-hmm. it's just i'm calm you know I, I i'm not i'm not jumpy at all when that when that happens yeah so it's it's pretty cool yeah yeah cuz it's i mean to me, to me, the feeling is not like nothing else other than that I can think of other than proposing, yeah. which is <laughs> That's probably right. one of the heightened adrenaline moments of your life, even if you know she's going to say yes, which yep. I did, um, because it's a surprise and it's this thing yep. and it's a, it's massive. And so you'd have, you know, all this, all this adrenaline jump up. And that's similar to this feeling to yeah. me. Um, I can't imagine how it would feel to just be to do well, to have the emotion of excitement, but to still feel calm. That is, yeah. that is really cool, man. <laughs> I think that's incredibly unique. Do, do you know is. of any other hunters who, who have that? No. No, do you I'm, know anybody I'm, else who who has adrenaline stuff? I, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, like my my either. case my case is so rare that um, there's not there's not many of us who who've had this situation. No, there are people who have adrenal indeficiencies and and stuff like that. But right. I've never talked to someone who's had my my exact condition. Wow. You know, who has zero adrenal glands. You know, and it, and who's surviving on on these steroids. So yeah, yeah it's pretty unique. Yeah, I was I was thinking too. I was like, this would be helpful in jujitsu too, but it also wouldn't because you if you need, got injured, yeah, it'd be a major problem. Yeah, and sometimes when when you're doing that, like the adrenaline actually fuels you. You know, I right. think of like football players too, right? I was terrible at football because I tried it for a year or two, and like everyone's all getting hyped up and like doing other things, and I just I wasn't. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just like I played soccer, and I was actually really good at soccer, and I think that's because that's that's. Uh, a different type of game where I don't have to have that type of mentality. It's not the gladiator type uh, mentality that yeah. football players have, right? Yeah. It's more of a skilled type game in a sense, a different skills. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not often a contact sport. I mean, Correct. sometimes soccer. Can sometimes be. it can be, and it, it is a violent. You know, can be a violent sport. Right. But but uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, it it was a much better sport for me because right. I didn't. You know, I was looking at my friends and their head button and stuff, and I'm like, "What is going on? <laughs> like, what is happening?" <laughs> you know. When did you Just When did you that. figure that out? Like, when did that When did you get like diagnosed and everything made sense? So I had uh, my first tumor when I was seven, um, and then um, I was I still had one one adrenal gland at that point. When I was nine, they discovered a second tumor on the other side, oh, okay. and that's when they removed. So from when I was nine years old, I started feeling. You know, and it was new to everyone, right? Because you can't talk to your doctor at the time. My doctor, I was the first case that they had ever done, mm-hmm. right? And so no one really knew what it was going to feel like. And so I was learning this too. And thank God, you know, in a way that I dealt with this when I was nine years old, thirty years ago, mm-hmm. because I've lived my life now like this, and so I know exactly what it is. Right. Where if I would have lived my life with adrenaline, and then all of a sudden now, it's gone, like that would, I think, be much more difficult for me, to be honest with you. Like, yeah. it would be more of a change, and I, I'd, I'd maybe miss it more, right? Yeah, I was trying to think, would I miss adrenaline? Yeah. I mean, for for all the reasons of, like, there's a lot I wouldn't be able to do anymore. Right. I, couldn't, I couldn't do martial arts. That it'd would be, be sad it'd, for it'd me. Be, well, it would be more difficult for you, but yeah. And, like, but, like, would I miss the... Because I think, I think if you asked a lot of people, they wouldn't... <laughs> They wouldn't miss that part of it. They wouldn't, yeah. Because often you want to be calmer than you yeah, are. That's you true. Know? And I, I understand that it, it, it is the fight or flight response, and you like you yep. want it for certain things. Yep. It's in theory, it makes you sharper or whatever. Yep. But oftentimes we hate that it's happening. Right. You know, we want to be calmer than we are. Right. Um. So I wonder. I wonder what that'd be like to. Yeah. Have gone on without it, but then you're you're like a kid trying to explain these very detailed, nuanced <laughs> things. Yes. And you know, you're seven. Like yes. Yeah. I, I couldn't have done that at seven. Yeah, it was. I grew up fast, you know. Like when I, I was, so. you know, nine years old, seven, nine, and then I had another one when I was eleven. Right, I had this other. So I actually, had three of these, three of these tumors. Um, and so, um, you know, I had to grow up fast. I, I dealt with a lot of stuff when I was young. Um, you know, spending a lot of time in hospitals and ICUs and doctors and you know poking and prodding and and t- to this day. Um, anytime I'm in a hospital, I always have a group of medical students in, you know, oh, yeah. because they're interested. They want to know yeah. uh, what it's like because it's not common and you can't just go to someone, you know, it's not like a migraine where most people have experienced it at some point, you know, you know, so they want to know what, what I feel. And, and like you said, I've tried to find ways that I can work it, work it to my advantage, right. right? Um, in my career and in what I do and yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to stay on this topic forever. No, I'm sure <laughs> it's not what you. Yeah. We were supposed to talk about hunting, <laughs> but I, I do. I just think it's fascinating because, like, yeah. you know, 
but I but I think that um, some of those it's one of those things where it's like well you know you had all this hardship and you know you turned out really cool and that kind of well I like to think so hand, right? <laughs> thank you you know <laughs> yeah. um, some yeah. people let it beat them I think you know yeah various versions of hardship so yeah that's awesome man yeah anyway back to hunting back to hunting yeah <laughs> I just I can't okay so I've I've had this analogy running through my head for yeah. the last couple of days let's see what you think about this and it, it's probably gonna be different when it's not my first year. But there's something to me that uh, is reminiscent of uh, childbirth, um, mm-hmm. and it's you get dang- dangerous territory for a guy to compare anything to childbirth. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> yes. talking pain wise, ladies. Yes. I'm not. Yeah. What I'm talking about is that doing that, the hunting, then the tracking, then not sleeping, and then we spent the entire day yesterday butchering, yeah. and then not sleeping, um, was exhausting. Yeah. And so I get through that, and I'm like, I don't think I ever want to do that again. Yeah. But then I think. What is going to happen is that over the next year, I'll be eating this amazing meat. Yeah, I'll be like coming to terms with the thing. I'll get sleep at some point yep. and feel recovered, and I'll forget how rough it is. I'll yeah. forget how much hard work it is. Absolutely. Know? And then you just go out there and you do it again. And you're going to, for me, you know, that's exactly right. You're gonna that the, the air is gonna start changing. You're gonna start feeling fall, and you're gonna think hunting, right? right. And for me, every year with that first kind of cold, cold breeze, my head immediately goes up here. It's mm-hmm. like I cannot wait mm-hmm. to get back up there and do the thing, right? Because it's it's worth it to get out there and, and sit out there and and um and see the deer and 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 harvest the deer and right. all the tracking, all of it, right? It's all worth it. Yeah. And then I'll be exhausted again, and you know. It's just a cycle. Yeah, but you're hooked, right? Right. You're hooked. Yeah. You're in yeah. it now. We had a we had a couple tags here, and uh, I think Andrea decided that the right rate is like for us right now, our skill level, and I'm sure people are way faster yeah. at all of this than we are, would be like a week per deer, a week because per deer. you need yeah. some recover time after that, and it's so much work to do it. Sure, there's no way we would go for another one while we're here. Well, and you you butchered your own. I mean, you know, that's not something a lot of people do. I mean, you right. know, some some do. Um, but a lot of people, they drop them off and pick them up two months later. And right. It's like, okay, you know, so. tempting. <laughs> yeah. Tempting. Yeah. It was funny to have you guys out there too, because you know, I'm, I'm gutting and it's late. And, uh, when we finally got through it, I'm thinking like, that wasn't so bad. Right. And yeah. you guys are like, well, and I realized that what took me, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. It, it was yeah, a little over an hour, but okay. Yeah. Took, you know, would take someone else 10 minutes, yeah. you know, to <laughs> yes. get all that gutting done because so much of it is I have to figure it all out. Right. Um, as I'm going, because what you know, in theory is different than what you're doing in practice. Exactly. And, and then the same thing with butchering, you know, yep. like you were like, eh, two hours maybe. And you know, we were at it for eight. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like I said to you, it's muscle memory after a while. Yeah. You know, you got three, four, five deer. Yeah. Uh, like I told you, my dad, <laughs> my dad's like the the legendary gutter up here, you know. Uh, you're going to not even think about it. Mm-hmm. You're just going to go and cu- do the thing, flip it over, you know, done, check, yeah. right? Like, right. right. So that's what's going to happen, too, is you're not going to have to sure. think. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what would have helped yesterday, too, is if I could stop cutting myself. Like, yeah, I mean. Like yes. me and knives have never been a good combo. Right. I always seem to cut myself when someone hands me a sharp knife somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I love dull knives because I don't cut yeah. myself very much. Um, but these knives are so sharp that like, and it's funny because you'll be working on something in there yep. that is very hard, like a joint. It's, yep. it's hard to get around a joint and to work it with a knife. But your finger is is so much less strong than that tissue. And yes. so when you flick that just a little bit just on little your bit. finger, you realize how much that knife can is really doing. Yep. Because it just goes whoop all the way in your finger. Yep. Um, so yeah, Andrew and I were trying to. I was I was super gluing. You my had hands up yesterday. I, yeah, I went out and saw the super glue on the table. I was like, "What's this for?" And hold up your hand. I didn't have time. Okay. I was like, yeah. "I don't have time to go get this stitch." So we're just gonna make this work. Andrew is terrified. I'm gonna get an infection, which is fair. Yeah. Um, but I told her like, you know, an infection's easy these days. Like yeah. I'll do a telehealth, it'll and be, they'll it'll send be me, you know. You get your antibiotics, antibiotics and, and you'll be great. Yeah, we'll rock it. And we'll rock. You'll be great. That's right. What else is I gonna do, man? You know, yeah. I gotta get it done. <laughs> you gotta get it done. You didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. That means gonna spoil. You gotta get it done. You gotta get it done. That's right. Oh, man, um, I haven't done the math on how much meat it is yet, but Andrea thinks somewhere around fifty pounds. Did you, you fill your freezer? Did you we pretty didn't. much fill your freezer? We did. Wow. I mean, I think we could probably fit two in the freezer. Two deer. Okay. It's like a five cubic foot sure. freezer. Yep. Um. And we have some other junk in there. Yeah. But um, I think we could probably fit two at some point. So gotcha. maybe one day that'll be the goal. That'll like be the one goal. for yeah. each of us will be the goal. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool. Absolutely. And that'll feed us for a good long time. And I'm, yeah. we're going to go see family. Yeah. And you know what I'm so excited about is to give them this meat. Give like, them, yeah. I didn't actually think I'd, you know, 
I enjoy being a selfish person. Yeah. Um, it's fun for me. And uh, <laughs> I'm particularly, you know, I did all this work on this meat. And as soon as I have it, I'm like, who do I know that would want some meat? Yeah. And that's a that's a funny feeling, too. Yeah. You know, I love I love it. I know a lot of people who who don't hunt or don't want to hunt, but love venison. Yeah. And one of my favorite Alex Miller, uh, someone oh, who, yeah. yeah, yeah, who who Tyler went to school with and, and I teach with, loves well, venison. I didn't go to school with. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. He, he was your professor. <laughs> yeah. One of you. Yeah, sorry. Um, he uh, he loves venison, like loves venison. And so one of my favorite things is to, to go drop off some summer sausage for him and he gives me the biggest hug and, you know, yeah. it's great. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. And and yeah. like they get to share in that story and that experience. Yeah. I have family I have a family member who used to hunt and doesn't anymore, doesn't have the time for it. And I think if I give him some of this meat, he'll be really excited about yeah. that. Because, you know, there's some if you've hunted once, you love it. You're, yes. you know. Yep. Um it takes it takes you have to love it to go do it. Because right. it's so much work. The the barrier to entry yeah. is is massive. And it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. No. Right. Getting up in the morning, going and you know, getting all your stuff on. Going out to the woods in the dark, the sitting freezing. in this sitting in this tree stand freezing. that's not built for comfort, <laughs> right? They're not built for comfort. Yeah. Um, and f- yeah, getting cold, and I mean, it's not it's not for everybody, right? But but I love it, you yeah. know. Uh, and a lot of people love it, yeah, which is cool. It's you end up with a story that's like nothing else, an experience yeah. like nothing else. I think an experience that is like incredibly human, yeah. You know, um, that's so core to our DNA, yeah. Um, to to be able to hunt and then literally just the best meat like venison is just venison's incredible yeah it's 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 you can't beat it no you can't beat it like i told you i i don't buy beef much at all right because i've got my venison and and that's that's what i'll cook yeah make burgers with or summer sausage or whatever you know yeah steaks great steaks the best meat that money (laughs) absolutely cannot buy that's right you can't buy um but yeah, I mean the the work that goes into it is is a lot. It know? is a lot, and, and there's nothing to it. You gotta you gotta go out and you gotta sit out that evening until you know nine or whatever. It gets really good and dark, and then yep. you come back and you gotta be out there again at five thirty, and you got all the clothes and yep. and for us, you know, we're camping at the same time, which right. involves some more work. You have to conserve water and you have to yep. deal with power and try to. We had to work all that out, and uh, it, it's an intense process. It is. It is. We're done now, though. Man. You're, you're I feel done, great, but you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna start getting that itch again, um, and and I come next fall, right? You're gonna be ready to go, yeah. ready to go, right? Think so, um, and you'll be bow hunting with us next. I'll year, be right? bow hunting. Yeah, I, uh, I can't wait. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun to get out there. Do you do you prefer bows or guns? Um, I don't. I don't prefer one over the other. To be honest with you, I, I love them both for different reasons, mm-hmm. right? Like the archery thing, the bow. I love how close you get to them, right? Um, that's that's super exciting to me. Mm-hmm. I love gun hunting because it's lighter in the season. I love hunting in snow. Mm-hmm. Like hunting in a blizzard up here is one of the most incredible experiences. And it happens quite a bit, mm-hmm. you know. We're, we're a couple hours from Canada. We're pretty far north up here, right? Yeah. So, so um, we get some snows. And there are times where we'll go in the woods in the morning. And by the time we come out, there's 15 inches of snow. And just seeing all of that happen and the animals come. I mean, it is just, it's incredible. I, I love get, that. I get why you feel that way. And I bet blood trailing is amazing oh, in the snow. It's yeah. like, just walk. And trailing, or uh, uh, dragging too. It's like. Sure. It's a sled. It's just like a sled. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. In fact, you could probably bring a sled if you wanted to. They, we do. Yeah. They do. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's probably one of the reasons why sleds, never mind. Um, <laughs> go far enough back and it's probably the first sleds were just like a big For game. thing of bark that were. Yeah. Shoved it. Yeah. Nope. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. So I get that. And also, it sounds like my nightmare because yeah, I hate you don't snow. love, right? You don't love I snow. I think I'd love to never see snow again in my life. <laughs> you know, I and I, I've said that for years and I haven't seen it in a, a little while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so much Well, you lucked out with the snow. weather because it snowed here like two weeks ago. And, so. it, and it's been, it was <laughs> freezing when we were going out, which yep. is perfect. That's what you yeah. want. They're moving. Yep. And then today was so hot, I was literally out sunbathing because <laughs> it was so hot it felt great it got up to like yeah almost yeah, 70 it was day. awesome yeah it was awesome yeah uh, and i needed that which bad. is rare for up here november 1st 70 degrees that's that's crazy pretty great yeah it was it was doing good weather for us man but now we're gonna head back south again which yep. is gonna be <laughs> perfect for me i don't have to come north again we're gonna do florida we're gonna do tucson texas it's gonna be awesome man great um i'm trying to think of what of what else we have here i mean i think i think we'll have more stories uh 
when we come back because yeah. you're going to be out there with us. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't get a crossbow. I thought for sure yeah. you were going to go for it. I had thought about it. I had thought about it. Um, but I just, I, I didn't, I didn't pull the trigger. I'm going to be up here in two weeks gun hunting again. And so, you know, I, I'll, I'll fill my tanks. <laughs> yeah. Did we make it, did we make this period less painful for you since someone was hunting at least? Oh yeah, know? absolutely. There was some success. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I, and I love, one of my favorite things is is introducing it to to, to 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 people who are new to the sport, or being there with the people who are getting their you know their first deer. I mean that is so exciting to me. I love I love that. Yeah, I love that. You get to see a lot of moments that it's not the same after that. Right. You know. Right. A lot of these things turn into to routine. Right. And for us, they're all brand new. Yeah. You know. Yep. There was so much that was new out there. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, one of my favorite moments, like when I saw that deer, I got so excited on the riverbank. Yeah. Because I'd been telling you all night, we're going to get this. And, and uh, you know, I don't think you were as confident as I was in the beginning or even maybe halfway through the tracking process, nope. you know. But I, I just, I had a feeling, right? Yeah. When I saw that deer, I was like, yes, you yeah. know, he's, he's going to do it. Yeah. That is so awesome. Well, and, we, and we hoped. <laughs> we hoped. <And laughs> it then, was close. And then you chased her across yeah. the creek up a hill, and yeah. we got her. I ran through that water. You ran through I was that done. I was like, I mean, that's I a the story, bridge. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, you can't recreate that no. doing anything else. No. And I, yeah. yeah. And it was like, it's all those things that like, you, I do, I want to share all these things with other yeah. people, but they were so like sacred that it was just me. I was, I was there when she died. Yeah. Like yep. you guys were coming up the hill. Yeah. I was watching this green light struggle to stand up yep. and I was there in that moment and yep. I wasn't, you know, I, I went up and approached her slow with my bow in case yep. I needed to, to finish it. But, yep. but you know, I was the only one that was there with her when she died and yep. I was the only one that was there with her, um, you know, chasing her through the woods on this last yep. wild scramble. Yep. And those, those moments are, they're very personal, yeah. you know? Um, yep. and I, you, you just, you gotta go out and do it. You I've been there several times where I've been looking them in the eyes when when they've gone. And same thing. It was yeah. just me, and I was, you know, they weren't going anywhere. Yeah. But I was gonna stay with them. And it, you're right. It's 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 a powerful moment. Yeah. It really is. And and I I want to take it seriously. I do take yeah. it very seriously. You know, we made a lot of changes between last year and this year, so yeah. that that never happens again. Yeah. Um, I know that this is hunting, and sometimes you you lose those animals. They yep. are so amazing that yep. sometimes they'll still get away from you. Right. Um, but I want to do everything I can to not let that happen. I'm really glad it didn't. Yeah. I, I was talking to my folks on the phone today and I was telling them the story cause we're not gonna see him for a little bit. And, uh, I was really proud to come to the conclusion that I think, I think people will forget. And there'll be people that'll see this episode yeah. and that'll, that'll judge it for the fact that we're talking hunting and, yeah. and be upset about this sure. and be upset about the death. And, and I can understand that. And I can even understand that some of this is morbid. Sure. It is. It's morbid to take the skin off and, and to gut and do all these things. Yeah. Even though this is, you have to look at the facts of this, which is this this is no longer an animal. Right. This is now a, a something I can use yep. as fuel, and we used every part of it. Yep. Um, but what people often are going to skip over is like that deer that is that is I I don't know if I think fifty is a low estimate, but but fifty ish pounds of meat in the freezer is going to feed me and my family for a, a good long time yep. is less death than the bag of flour in my cabinet. Yeah. There was less, far less death involved with that yep. one animal. Yep. And it's going to feed me so much longer. And that's what big game is really all about. Yeah. And I, I'm astounded by that fact. Yeah. People, people choose to ignore that. Yep. You know, I agree. And they can keep choosing to ignore it, but yeah. we'll be out here hunting, you know? Yeah. And for me, you know, that's a huge part of it, but my family's been doing this for li three generations, four yeah. generations. My, my great grandfather hunted on this land. Mm -hmm. Right. And, that to me is is really cool that I can continue that family tradition, feeding his family now, feeding you know me and my family and your friends and my friends, yeah. right? Um, hunting up here, that's that's really really powerful and, and really really neat for me to think about as well. Yeah, I'm glad I get to be a part of the uh, absolutely Kevin Yetto or yeah, Kevin Yetto story. story. <laughs> absolutely, I'm up gonna here. I want a plaque. I want to. I well, I'm gonna put you up oh, there. Yeah. You can see that's where we put. I'm gonna have you put your name up there. Okay, good deal. And we'll put the date. We, we do that for everyone to get to deer awesome. up here. So awesome. That's cool. That's we'll cool. add you to the add you to the board. Yeah, and someday someday we'll have some antlers for your wall. Too, yeah, because right? <laughs> I won't have any use for them. But so, actually, no, I would because I know that like real antlers make the best rattlers yeah. too out there. I yeah, I don't have a pair of real ones. So. Yeah. Um, we we yeah. got plenty of time. To, you're young. You got plenty, plenty of time to hunt yet. You're gonna yes. get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you'll have us back. Which oh, I, absolutely. You know, we try to be good guests. Oh yeah, it was it's great. been so much fun, man. I, I appreciate you reaching out and yeah. And you were our, you know, our our only chance to come do this this mm -hmm. year. We we have some friends that have let us go before. They couldn't this year. Yeah. And so Andrew and I were like, oh damn, we can't miss another year. So yeah, it was awesome of you to have us out and to do this. Um, 
Andrea, my oh, first of all, can you can you take some quick quick, quick photos for me? Yeah. Thank you. Um <laughs> watch the camera. Um I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm forgetting. Other parts of this story. Yeah. I mean, I didn't I, I feel like I didn't ask you enough about like what you oh. do here because I had no. all my no. shit. This is about you. Out. This isn't about me, you know. But you I mean, you, you and your family have great stories. Like you're uh, that's your great uncle that I met. That's my great uncle. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Bro, his stories like <laughs> have, he's gotta have amazing stories. He told me a couple of them, you know, and like this house that he built by himself, yeah. the wood that he went and got and yep. polished and like it's immaculate, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I, I like that you told me he like he, he used to process the deer like inside in the house. Yeah. 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 He'd hang it. He's got these beautiful beams that he pulled out of the swamp down, right. down here. And, uh, he'd hang the deer when, before he had carpet and he'd hang the deer right inside and, and butcher them right. Cause the kitchen's right there. Yeah. So why not? Right. Yeah. <laughs> he had heat, he had a wood stove. And so yeah. he'd butcher it right there, put a little tarp down and, uh, yeah. But so funny. just awesome. I, one of my favorite things too is during, during season is, is going down and, and listening to those stories and, you know, it's, it's about the people too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, spending time, um, whether it's family or friends or, or whatever it is. I mean, that's, that's part of the hunting experience as well is, yeah. you know, uh, Andrea said it several times, like we had an awesome team out in the woods the other night. Yeah, we did. Right. We had four of us out there going for this deer. And I don't know if it was one of us, if we would have gotten that deer, I don't know if it was two of us. Yeah. If we would have gotten that deer. Yeah. Everybody uh, I, played an important part. I think part. everyone played in a very important part in, in that the harvesting of of that deer the other yeah. night uh and that was cool you yeah. know that was really neat yeah 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 and and i'm almost kind of glad like in a, in a way with hunting you want like uneventful you want controlled <laughs> and you want like i don't know because because that indicates that you've done it very well and you've right. perfect shots and all these things at the same time all's well that ends well right and we had an amazing story at the end of it yeah you know that that run through the woods could have been <laughs> my worst story of my life that could have been terrible yeah and it wasn't because right. It ended well and it ended fine. Yep. Um, so it's just great, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we found it. <laughs> I had, like I told you, I knew well, we would. Yeah. I knew we would. She knew how to hide too because when you yeah. came up on her, on that creek, she was on the bank of the creek yeah. and her left shoulder, she had pushed it into the, yep. into the grass yep. nice and high because you could really only see her head above yeah. it. So she, she was like hiding that green light, you yeah. know? Um, so we wouldn't have been able to just find that light shining That's, where she was standing. It, I don't think I told you this, but one of the reasons I started walking upstream is because, uh, and my great uncle actually said this to me, is deer are always going to go to water when they're hurt. That's yeah. just where they're going to go. And I figured when she started crossing a couple of times that she was trying to stay close to that. So mm -hmm. I thought, I'm just going to walk upstream right. and see what we can see. Right. And I saw her eyes. That's what I saw, yeah. you know, with my flashlight. Yeah. She was looking right at me. Yeah. So. Yeah, you thought you had seen the... Uh, the knock at yeah, first, right? At first, I thought it was the knock. But then, and then you realize now, like how actually bright that knock yeah, is in the dark. Like, yeah. like you can see it so. You far. can see that thing. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm I'm gonna order myself <laughs> a yeah. set of those for next year. Make sure you get the right size because I I've dealt with that a few times. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many different sizes of arrows out there. I will absolutely. Um. So yeah, greatest pieces of advice: shorten up your shot. Blood trailing flashlight is yeah. totally worth it. Yeah. Lighted knocks. Lighted knocks. And I had a better broadhead this year. You had a better broadhead. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's what we learned this year Absolutely. among many other lessons. Yeah. So, um, we good. Mm -hmm. Do you need anything for the episode that I didn't talk about? No, I just think that, uh, you came to me in a too worrisome light about worrying about your finger. Oh, Andrea because thinks that I made it sound like she was too worried about my, f about my finger about getting infected. infected. Yeah. Because you didn't mention the fact that you didn't wash it out. Before you oh, <laughs> because I didn't mention that my, you're right. Because I should have washed it out. Yeah. And then she'd be fine. <laughs> and that's fair. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I was on a time crunch. I had to close it up fast. You had to get the bacteria out. I had to get the bacteria out <laughs> is what Andrea thinks. I don't know how much they can hear you ever. I know. Some, I th probably in here they can hear you, but some places they can't hear yeah. you like at all. Um, yes, I'm sorry. I did. Uh, <laughs> I definitely should have washed it. And uh, that would have been smart. Yep. Smart good guy stuff but i think i think in the future i just won't cut myself yeah don't do that right yeah. right i'll just be better <laughs> just be that's better right. okay do that <laughs> <laughs> that's the real lesson just yeah. be better that's right at all of this at all of this okay well we're gonna take our meat and eat it and share it and i'm very pumped about that so awesome. um thank you again for having us thanks yeah. for being on the podcast it's yeah. kind of fun yeah it's great do love it. it yeah thanks for coming up 
Absolutely. Um, and folks, we will be checking in from the next few places. I hopefully will have some returning guests because we're going to some of our favorite spots coming up. Um, so if, if that's good for you, then congratulations. And if you don't like the former guests, then I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Go fuck yourself. And that's it. So yeah, we'll be going south and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for listening. As always, we'll see you. Don't go fuck yourself. I like you guys. Um, as always, we'll see you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.